If you follow what I'm about to show you in this video, you'll be able to three times your sales using appointment setters. This is a 45 minute training where I cover everything you need to know about appointment setters. When you need to be hiring them, where to hire them, how to hire them, the software you should be using with appointment setters, what their daily workflow looks like, who they should be calling in what order, how we use appointment setting scripts, and so much more. If you don't know who I am, my name is Ravi Abubala. I'm the founder of Scaling with Systems, where we build custom end-to-end -end marketing systems for coaches, agencies, course creators, and online service providers. And our mission is to help you create a business that serves you instead of you serving it. You can go below this video at any time to get instant access to the six-page document that I'll be referencing throughout the video. What is the job of an appointment setter? The job of an appointment setter is to turn more leads into qualified appointments. Anything outside of that is useless and is not worth your appointment setter's job, and it costs you tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars every single month. And I'm going to break this down for you here in a moment, but I see so many people creating content online and, uh, you know, like selling different things with appointment setters, and they actually have no idea what the hell they're talking about. Um, and they're creating a massively complex system. And what I'm going to give you here is a very simple system that allows us to run a very lean team, uh, still have appointment setters, but have them be massively profitable. Like, you know, we have on average, I think like a 10 or 20 X return on the money that we pay our appointment setters. And so that's what you want in your business where most people have like a one or two times return on the money that they pay their appointment setters because they have too many, it's too complex, or they're not doing the right things. All right. So here's an illustration that I, I created just to show you how simple an appointment setter can be, but how powerful they can be at the same time. So on the bottom here, you have lead booked call and become a client. This is like the typical sales process, a way for someone to become a lead, a way for someone to book a call and a way for someone to become a client. 10% of people that become leads book a call and about 30% of people that book a call become a client. That means that an automated funnel conversion without any appointment setters should be converting at roughly 3%, meaning 3% of people that become leads eventually end up buying something from you. That's a great stat to look at, okay? And that should be running on its own before we even hire an appointment setter, which I'm gonna get into here in a moment, but 3% is a really great number. Now, once we have that number running, a way that we can triple our business is by adding appointment setters. For example, from a lead to a booked call on their own just from automated emails and text messages and the video sales letter, you should have 10%. But if you had appointment setters picking up the phone, outbound dialing, emailing, uh, texting, all of that stuff to try to convince, the, convince this person that they need to book a call to speak with you, you could more than double the amount of leads that become booked appointments. So you could add an additional 12%, which is our KPI for new leads that are coming in that don't book an appointment that end up booking an appointment, right? So literally by, its own, by itself, it's 10% of leads that become booked appointments. With appointment setters, it's an additional 12%. So it's about 22% of leads become booked appointments. And then when it comes to becoming clients, what you'll notice you'll typically have have, depending on your market, anywhere from a 50% uh, down to like a 10 or 20% no show rate, meaning these are the people that don't show up to calls that are booked. But one of the lowest hanging fruits and one of the highest areas for our appointment setters to have leverage is no shows. So people that have to reschedule, they don't show up, something happens. Well, we get another 10% of those people that were supposed to book that were going to become clients, but they didn't because they no showed or they, or they rescheduled and never showed up we get an additional 10% of people to actually close because the appointment setters, hey, I saw that you made it this far, but you didn't book a call, let's get you on the calendar, and they follow up until that's the case. So that's an additional 10%. So before it was 30% of people that book a call become a client, now it's 40% of people. So automated funnel conversion, meaning from lead to clients without any appointment setters, is about 3%. Supplemented funnel conversion, aka an appointment center funnel conversion, uh, is 8.8%, which is almost a three times increase in efficiency, increase in revenue, and really increase in profits because you're not really spending any more money other than the commissions of the appointment setters, which we'll get to here in a little bit. Okay, so that's the power of appointment setters. And we're going to talk to you here in a little bit about how to hire them and what they should do, et cetera, et cetera. But I wanted to show you uh, the power of appointment setters if you do it correctly. Now, just to be crystal clear, what appointment setters are not here to do is they are not there to run errands, confirm appointments for the salespeople. I hate, I see it all the time. It's like, oh, if the salesperson has an appointment on the calendar, have them confirm their appointment. Why are you having the appointment setter confirm their appointment? Because that's losing the time from the appointment setter booking more appointments on the salesperson's calendar or really do anything that is not contacting leads or booking appointments, okay? 
If you have an appointment setting team spending 90% of their time contacting leads and speaking to uh, leads, they cannot fail. I promise you, even if you don't have the best scripts, even if you have like an okay system, if they're spending the majority of their time contacting leads and talking to them, they cannot fail. Most underperforming teams happen because 90% of their time is spent doing something other than this likely being bogged down in admin tasks, right? Not having an optimized process or daily changes to the company like the CEO saying, oh, we're selling to these people one day or these people the other day or we're selling this product this day or this product for that day or I need you to do this thing over here and they're never able to get into a flow, right? And I'm gonna walk through each one of these more in depth, but most of the time people think that it is the team member's fault. Oh, this appointment setter sucks when in reality you haven't set them up for success, which we're gonna talk about in this video. So the first question that you need to be asking yourself is like, should you even hire an appointment center to begin with? Well, you should only hire an appointment center once you've standardized the lead process and you're generating at least 30 leads per day. What do I mean by this? Standardizing the lead process means that 90% of your leads and appointments come from the same source. They're consuming the same content and they're interested in the same product. Okay, this doesn't mean that you have, uh, you're doing like a VSL over here, a low ticket product over here, a free Facebook group over here, um, a, I don't know, whatever the hell else people are talking about t in today's day and age, like all these different things. That, and so the appointment center is like trying to go to six different platforms, IG DMs, Facebook group, uh, text messages and calling, emails over here. And then all these people are consuming different pieces of content. And then all these people are all looking for different different products then people wonder why they're not getting their appointment centers to work. Okay. The, uh, you should already have a converting funnel set up, which if you're in here and you're watching this video and you haven't gotten that set up from the previous sections, go back and do that now. Um, so if you don't have, or you should already have a converting funnel set up with new leads flowing in daily and leads becoming booked calls. Uh, for example, this process right here, this should already be in place. It doesn't mean that you have to have 10% and 30%, but you should at least be profitable or at least having leads and, and calls coming in. Um, if you don't, do not hire an appointment setter, okay? There, I'm going to talk about this in a moment, but there are additional costs involved in an appointment setter other than just, you know, some people like, oh, appointment centers don't cost me anything. Yes, they do. They cost technical debt. They cost complexity debt. They cost increased. They actually have a salary or they have to, you have to actually pay them money. They, they cost you having to focus your attention on them. So I'd say that the majority of clients that we speak to are not ready for them yet until they standardize this lead process. Okay. Which is exactly what we do in scaling with systems first. Right. And then you also need to be generating around 30 new leads per day because anything less than 30 leads a day is not enough for an appointment center to make a living. Okay. So let's walk through this math together. So 30 leads, right? Times 30 days in a month is about 900 leads a month. And then let's assume that they're booking about 10% of them which is 90 appointments a month. And then let's say of the ones that are being booked, you're closing about 20% of them. So remember, these are all conservative numbers that we're using here. So 20% of them, that's about 18 uh, appointments being closed a month. And then let's say your average cash collected per appointment is $4,000 because we're only paying our appointment center out on the cash that we're generating. So that's $72,000 that the appointment center is bringing in. And then let's say that we're paying the appointment center, the industry standard is about 5%. That's $3,600 um, a, a month in commission. The other option is if you did want to get an appointment setter sooner or some of these numbers didn't work out, like you don't have a $4,000 cash per close deal, for example, um, then what you could do is you could add a base salary of $1,500 to it, which would get you to around $3,600 a month at 18 new leads a day. So almost half of what you had before. But if you, I see a lot of people getting like five new leads a day. And if we were to do the same math, five leads a day times 30 days times a 10% booking rate is 15 appointments a month times a 20% close rate is three uh, deals a month times $4,000 cash per deal is $12,000. And you're giving them 5% of that. So they're earning $600, even with a base salary that doesn't make sense. Or let's say you're generating uh, 10 appointments a month. Um, uh, leads a day, I'm sorry, but you're only getting $2,000 cash per deal. Once again, it's the same problem. So you need to play around with this number a little bit until you can figure out what makes the most sense. And that's also why that like uh, 5% commission is important for you to do that math as well. Because for example, if you have a lower cash per deal, you might have to increase the commission because even if we had, um, let's go back here and say 30 leads, 30 days, 10% booking, 20% closing at $4,000. That's $3,600 a month. But let's say our thing is only $2,000. 
$1,800 a month is not really enough for somebody to live, at least in the United States. So we might have to make this 1% and by, or, uh, I'm sorry, 10%. And by making the 10%, they are taking home $3,600 a month, okay? And remember, they're taking home $3,600 a month, but they made you $36,000. So that's a 10X return on your appointment centers, okay? So I hope that makes sense, but these are the two main things that we need in place, a standardized lead process and about 30 appointments a day, or you can kind of do the math backwards to see what makes the most sense for you. Um, if you do have a base salary, a quick note here is that I do recommend that you um, that you only pay them if they hit KPI. So what you'll notice, and we'll talk about this later, is that appointment centers are kind of can, can sometimes be revolving doors. You hire one, they come on board, and then they leave, they go somewhere else, something like that. And so you don't want to like have to hire a bunch, and then you're paying them all base salary, and then they all leave at the end of the first month. So for us they're contractually obligated within their first month to hit KPI of a 12% of appointments, uh, uh, of leads to appointments, which we'll talk about here in a little bit, or we don't pay them their base salary, okay? So th that kind of protects the company. That's a lesson that I've learned. And like I said in the beginning uh, or earlier, remember that the cost of hiring new team members is not monetary alone, okay? There is complexity, there's management debt, there's technical debt, and there's the opportunity cost of taking your eye off of what's been working, right? If, you're, if, if you hit these two things here, you have a standardized lead process and you're getting 30 new appointments a day, then something's working. And when you have to hire an appointment center, then you're gonna take your eyes off the prize of that for a moment, and so those numbers might go down. So understand that it's not just as simple, no matter how how many ads or YouTube videos you see about how easy an appointment center is never in the history of the world has adding people to your team, adding human beings, working with more human beings, never in the history of the world has that been uh, a simple process. I should say it sometimes can be easy. It's a simple process. Okay. So, uh, now let's talk about how to hire an appointment center. So uh, I dropped the link to our hiring process, our eight figure talent funnel. So you can click on that uh, and go through that process of hiring a new team member that covers how to hire all the different team members like appointment centers and team leaders, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I would, there's nothing, anything special about an appointment center. The important thing is that you watch this whole thing first to make sure you're ready for one and then know how to set one up for success and then go in and hire your first appointment center. Okay. I really don't believe you need to hire an outside agency or recruiters with all due respect. I've tried every person out there, like there's some very big names and I've never really seen success with it. I take responsibility that either I wasn't ready for an appointment center. Um, we didn't have the process set up yet, or I thought that they would solve all my problems by just giving me an appointment center. When in reality, it was a, a different problem with my business. So I don't like um, outside agencies and recruiters because they just make you depend dependent on them. If you have to hire someone and pay 18 grand or 20 grand or 50 grand, whatever it is, every single time you need to hire an appointment center, then um, you can't do the number one thing that a CEO is responsible for, which is finding and grooming talent. So I really recommend just following our process. It's incredibly simple mind. It's not complex. It's not like you have to find this, you know, diamond in the rough. That's this like unique person that blah, blah. If you have a system that's set up correctly, like I'm going to show you inside of here, scaling with systems, get it. If you have a system set up correctly, then you can put almost anybody in that position. And I have proven that in a portfolio company where we have taken, instead of like really qualified um, appointment centers that have been in the B2B, to be world and like understand sales and all that stuff. I've literally taken moms, uh, my girlfriends, I've taken total strangers for this entire process and put them in there and had them convert um, better than I, some of the most vetted appointment centers out there. Okay. So th it's really more on the system than it is on the person. And when you have that, then it makes everything so much easier. Now, uh, the thing you should be asking yourself is what are the key performance indicators for appointment centers? So how do I know if an appointment center is doing a good job? The only thing you should be concerned about is their lead to booked ratio, which should be around 12%. So the lead to booked ratio is the percentage of new leads that have become booked calls. So if you get a hundred booked calls in, in a month, and you have five appointments set from your appointment setters, that is a 5% lead to booked ratio. And we really want the number to be around 12%. That's our goal. 12% of leads that don't have bad data, you know, that aren't fake information, 12% of leads uh, to turn into booked calls. All other indicators other than that only serve as possible correlation to their main KPI, which is the lead to book ratio. Because we used to index for a number of dials. We used to index for uh, time to contact. We used to index for a bunch of different stuff as the primary KPI. 
And there wasn't always a direct correlation with like, if they did more dials, they got more appointments set. Actually, ironically, some of our best appointment setters make the least amount of dials. So what do you want to, what do you want to optimize your appointment setters for? the most activity that this person can do or the most outcome that this person can do, right? And so we, as a systems-based company, optimize for the outcomes, okay? So in my opinion, uh, it should the number one KPI should be your lead to booked ratio. Now, the other KPIs that are important and you can slowly add on later on is, for example, number of new leads that come in in a month, um, the number of booked calls, like set number of book calls that are from your appointment setters, the amount of new cash that comes in from uh, demos that were uh, set by the setting team. Like I said, the lead to book ratio is the most important. And then the time to contact. So this is how long it takes for anyone to outbound dial a new lead once they're created. So as soon as a lead comes in, how quickly is your appointment center picking up the phone and calling them? Uh, there's plenty of studies that show that you can increase your conversion percentage by 60x uh, by literally getting to a lead within the first five minutes of them opting in. And I see a lot of our clients who are doing, quote unquote, the appointment setting by themselves. They are literally doubling or tripling their booked calls because they don't have a whole lot of leads. So they're just picking up the phone and calling them as soon as they see a lead come in. And it's crazy the process. Um, it's crazy watching them set all of these appointments, right? And then of course, in any kind of dashboard or sheet, you'll have like the team as a whole for all these numbers. And then you also have individual stats for these numbers, okay? Please, 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 please only start with the lead to booked ratio and track it using the simplest methods possible. You can use your CRM. A lot of CRMs will just allow you to look at that, da that information in there. A third party data dashboard tracker like P Pletco is an example of one that we use or Google Sheets, okay? What's important is that it is simple, not that it's fancy. Fancy always breaks. We used to have the fanciest dashboards and color combinations and all these complex formulas, and they always broke. I had to hire people to fix them, et cetera, et cetera. And it wasn't until I came in and just redid all of our dashboards and I made the numbers like a monkey could understand it, such as number of new leads, new leads this month, right? Um, it w so that a monkey can understand it, that it, we actually started being able to see our numbers and thus increasing our numbers. Okay. That was kind of a big bottleneck in our company. So we'll discuss dashboards in a different module, uh, like how to set up dashboards, tracking dashboards, et cetera, et cetera. But for now you can use Google sheets. It's very simple. Literally you can manually update it. You don't have to have automation. You can have a VA do it. Just, you just want to know how many booked calls are coming in from the leads. Right. Um, and this is an example of a dashboard that we have. Um, this is obviously just an example one that I'm creating for you because you can see the time to contact zero minutes. But for example, new uh, leads have come in this month so far is 98 new booked calls is one they've collected, uh, they've closed one deal, uh, let's say at $5,997 in cash. The lead to booked ratio is 1%. The time to contact is 0%. And then you can see some of those same numbers on an individual stat level. Okay. And you can use this number, uh, the lead to booked to measure the success of your appointment setters as you scale. If you don't have that number, then you're not really going to be able to know like, Hey, how well is this appointment setter doing versus this appointment setter? Okay. Over time, you can add in additional KPIs, like the number of deals closed from an appointment center or the cash collected, uh, these other KPIs that I put inside of here. But in the very beginning, I think you just need one to get started. Now let's talk about how to get set up with an appointment center. Okay. The main thing that we want to do is streamline their workflow as much as possible. Okay. So anything that is outside of contacting leads is a waste of time. I'm going to say that again. Anything that is outside of contacting leads is a waste of time for your appointment setters. So think of your appointment setters like professional athletes. Okay. So anything other than them, like scoring points, shooting free throws, whatever else it is, uh, like laundry or driving to practice or planning their travel, et cetera, et cetera, for a professional athlete is a waste of time and it costs you money. Okay. So at professional athletes, LeBron James, he doesn't think about like, you know, Oh, what am I wearing today? And Oh, uh, you know, where's practice going to be today? And Oh, I have to fly to Houston tomorrow. Let me go online and look at Google flights. He doesn't worry about any of that. He just worries about playing and that's what he's optimized for. And that's why he's one of the best. Okay. So in this case, there are three main areas that appointment centers, uh, that an appointment center needs to be optimized. Oh, this is actually one, two, three, four. There are four main areas that an appointment center needs to be optimized. The first is they need to know who to contact. The second is how they're actually contacting them. 
The third is what do they say to them? And the fourth is how do they physically book the appointment? If you get these four things correct, then your entire appointment setting process is solved. There does, you, you could be doing 1,000 leads a day, and as long as you have these four things correct, it's good to go. And the, the great thing is I'm going to show you how to do this here in a moment, and this will scale all the way up to 1,000 appointments a day. You don't need to add any more complexity to it, okay? So let's start with who to contact, okay? Most CRMs have what's known as smart lists, which allow you to create dynamic lead lists um, that appointment centers can focus on and not think about who to dial. So you, a smart list allows you to filter their last contact point when they opted in, what, acts, uh, what assets they consumed, if they were a no-show, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm going to show you some examples here in a little bit of what we use. But a smart list is probably the most underutilized but most important tool that an appointment setter can use. Because if they get to just come inside and they know every day all I do is hit this list, this list, this list, this list, then they become robots. And you want them to be robots. You don't want them to have to think – Every single time they're like, oh, wonder who I'm going to call today. That's not what you want. You just want them making, doing action. Okay. Um, the goal here is to always have some sort of dynamic time variable so that once they make a contact, they disappear from the list, almost kind of gamifying the job a little bit. So I tell our appointment centers, every time I open up these smart lists, they should be empty. Okay. Your job is before you clock out, it should be empty, empty the smart list, empty the smart list, empty the smart list. Okay. So a great example that I'm going to walk through here in a little bit is people that have become leads but have not been contacted within the last 48 hours. So as soon as they make a call, then based on the information that that, that smart list is looking at, hey, have they been contacted in the last 48 hours, then um, the lead disappears from that list, okay? And it doesn't have to be a time-based variable. It could be a bunch of different things. But just to kind of show you inside Prospect Flow, if you go to contacts here on the left-hand side and go to smart list, you can actually um, create smart list from here by just adding filters. So I could say, uh, you know, I want somebody who has a last name that starts with G. I want someone who has an email that's, uh, I don't know, gmail.com. Uh, the last activity that we had, the last inbound activity that we had, the last appointment that they did, how old they are, where they're at in the pipeline, all these different things. And you can also add new things inside of here as well to create different filters inside of Prospect Flow or inside of your CRM. And let me kind of walk you through what our smart views uh, look like here. So the first one that we have our appointment centers, and you can see literally it has numbers, very simplified order of who they should contact when they wake up in the morning as soon as they get every time they get to the they open up their crm boom you call these in this order so the first is uh, leads created within 48 hours and they have less than one contact aka people that have been just created and nobody's contacted them yet so that's the first thing we always want to call because these are brand new leads they just saw our ad they saw our youtube video they're interested but they didn't book a, a call we need to pick up the phone and dial them asap you get them within five minutes and they're sometimes shocked and you can book a call from them the second is incoming in 30 days. So these are people that have responded back to uh, the appointment centers and SMS blasts and email blasts, something they've replied back to our messages. And now we're able to start a conversation with them. The reason why this is number two, and this is pretty important is because, you know, if you've ever had appointment centers or you've done appointment setting before, you'll learn that 90% of your time is going outbound and trying to contact people. And only 10% of your time is actually speaking to the people that want to speak with you. So if you can filter through and be getting back to people that are actually responding back to you, then you can increase that lead to booking rate, right? You're increasing the efficiency of the time spent. So incoming is anybody that sent us a message in the last 30 days, all right? Then the third one is going to be people that uh, no-showed us within 30 days, and it's been more than four hours since we've communicated with them last. So these are people that made it all the way to the point. Maybe they were even set by an appointment setter. They made it all the way to the point to a booked call, but then they didn't show up to the call. So the salesperson marks them as a no-show, and then our appointment centers pick up the phone, and they dial them, hey, you're supposed to have this call, you didn't have it, and a good majority of our appointments are set from this no-show. And we add the variable and greater than four hours communication because uh, we want to make it so that if, if someone called them this morning, and then it's like six hours later, another appointment center logs in, and they haven't responded back, they'll pick up the phone and call them again. And so that, that keeps us really hot on the people that should have showed up for an appointment and allows us to set more appointments. The fourth one here is leads created uh, within 72 hours. They have less than five hour total communications and they have greater than four hours since their last communication. Now, what is this list for? This list is similar to this first one, leads created within 48 hours, except for it's pretty much saying like, hey, these are people that were recently created, but we haven't talked to them enough. 
So our goal is five touch points within 72 hours, call, email, text. Um, and so we want to make sure that our appointment setters are doing that. And so we have a whole smart list that's dedicated only to that. So if somebody hasn't been contacted within 72 hours, um, they are, hasn't had five contacts within 72 hours, and it's been greater than four hours since the last contact, because what we don't want to do is like 10 contacts within 10 minutes. That's what this kind of smart view prevents. This has said, hey, they were created within 72 hours. Um, they've had less than five total pieces of communication and it's been four hours since the last communication that we had with them. Okay. And then the next one is leads created within 14 days and greater than four hours communication. So you can kind of see inside of here as well, like all of these leads kind of waterfall down into the other list on the bottom. So if you start at the top, let's say you started right here, this list could have five people in it and this list could have 10 people in it. Well, once this list is cleared out and you move down to this list, you clear all five, this list would have only five in it too, because this list down here includes the top list. I hope that makes sense as I'm describing that. Okay. So they're kind of waterfalling down. So then the fifth one is people that have been created within 14 days and it's been at least four hours since we try to speak to them last. Okay. So these are people that are still hot because they are created within the last 14 days, but they're definitely not as hot as some of these uh, other lists that are up here. And then finally, what we've noticed is that 60 days is like the absolute maximum of if somebody has an opted into one of your assets within 60 days, the chance of you getting them to set an appointment 60 days later is very, very rare. So this is like, this is kind of what we we call our catch all. If they are uh, leads created within 60 days and greater than four hours communication, if they fall, um, they, they get through all these other smart view lists and our appointment centers have like time on their hands, then they'll just rip through this list. So just to give you some context, these lists total all of this stuff together between one through five could have, let's say for example, 100 people, but then list, this list could have a thousand people inside of it. Okay. So that's, this is like our catch all and we sort them by the date that the lead was created. Okay. Um, a few notes on the smart list here. I hope this makes sense to everybody uh, that's watching this. A few notes on the, uh, on the smart list, uh, for less than five appointment setters, everything should be a free for all. It is so much more simpler and it is uh, so much more efficient. I know a lot of people that try to claim leads like, Oh, I'm working this lead. I'm working that lead. No, 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 no. Unless you're at this complex enterprise level sales, that's like 12 months long, you should be just rewarding people that are not communicating with the lead, but that are booking the lead. Okay. That's once again, it goes back to that lead to booked ratio number. That's the thing we care about. So don't, don't just be designating. You get this lead, you get that lead, you get this lead, you get that lead. Everybody gets any lead. It's all free for all if they, if they show up in this smart view list here, but then once the appointment set, then it becomes that appointment setter lead, uh, all the way to the close at which point they get paid. Okay. Now the only time that this, I see this different is if you have like greater than five appointment setters, it starts to make a little bit of sense to start delegating the leads because if not, they'll just like tr look for the lowest hanging fruit. So once you have more than five appointment setters, it does kind of start to make sense to be like, you get 10 leads, you get 10 leads, but that's an overly complex process that won't apply to 99% of the people inside of here. And then the final thing here on, uh, on the who to contact is if you're running a direct messaging funnel or a Facebook group funnel, this can still work. So these things can still work for that. You can kind of recreate it for that. But I will say that for scalability reasons, I would 100% recommend switching to using a CRM as quickly as possible, or things are going to get very, very messy. So a lot of the, a lot of times we have clients that come in and they try to, they try to come in and they try to do like a Facebook group funnel or a D direct messaging funnel, and they want to keep that. And I, I respect that and understand that. And we're happy to help you with that. But the problem with that is that when you're trying to add appointment centers to that, it's so complex having appointment centers hop into your Instagram and, and you know, you have 10 appointment centers inside of there all doing different messages. Then you have a different CRM for Instagram than you do for your salespeople. And it becomes way, way too complex. So we used to have a Facebook group and a Instagram DMS and all this different stuff. And what I learned is that if you can just get a name, email, phone number and put them inside the CRM, it, it just, the fact that it's simpler makes it better for your company than if you have like multiple different touch points. And if you remember, um, oh, this little formula here, this all should be leading. Like you should just have all of your, if I can just draw on this real quick, let's see here. All of your traffic sources should just lead directly to one area for them to become a lead. Okay. You shouldn't have like a thing over here and they become a lead, a thing over here and they become a lead, a thing over here and they become a lead. Like that's just way too complex and thus it'll complicate this process here. So you should just have one main area for someone who's a total stranger to come in and they become a lead, typically an opt-in funnel. And then once you have that, you'll be good to go. Okay. You'll have a much more simpler system. 
All right, now let's talk about how to contact the leads. So remember, the first thing that we talked about is who they should contact on a daily basis. The next thing we talk about is how to contact, okay? So most CRMs have what are known as power dialers or predictive dialers that allow your appointment setting team to contract to contact hundreds of people a day. So a power dialer is something where you like go to a smart view list and, or, or a smart list and then you literally just click dial and it just one by one dials each person and it allows you, it prevents your appointments from having to like open up multiple windows or open up multiple tabs. And there's also predictive dialers, which is where it'll call 5,000 people at the same time and then it will use AI to identify who's actually picked up the phone based off of like, hello, hi, hello, something like that. And then it'll connect your appointment center directly to that person. Now, these definitely have pros and cons to them, of which one's the good one and what's bad, et cetera, et cetera. In my experience, if you're selling something that's like a little bit more sophisticated, it's business to business, it's high ticket, I actually typically using um, a little bit more intentionality with uh, our outreach. And so that's actually what our appointment setting team does. They go through manually one by one and they open up each one. They'll read any notes and then they'll make a dial. They can still easily make a hundred dials a day if they needed to. But this, what I've le learned with doing the power dollars, predictive dialers is it's like you, someone could answer on the first ring and then you're they're like, hello. And then you're like trying to like read any information on them before you say something. So you can actually add value to the conversation. So if, it, if you're doing this like mass market, make money online, something like that, then maybe the power dollars and predictive dollars for one of my portfolio companies, we use the power dialer and it works extremely well, but that's because every single person, like it's a very simple offer and it's not really that complicated and every person's coming in in the exact same scenario. Okay. So, uh, but if, that, if you're, if that's not the case, then we recommend being intentional with your outreach. The process is very simple. Once, when it comes to how to contact someone, every lead gets a double dial. So you call them and then immediately you call them right after that again, within two seconds, they get an SMS and they get an email regardless of the outcome of the call. So someone picks up, great, have a conversation with them. They said they're gonna book a call. Then you send them over a text or an email with a link to book. You have a conversation and you do book the call on the phone. Then you send them over a text and email and remind them of the time of their call. Uh, you don't get them on the call. Then you send them a text and an email and ask them, to book a call to speak with you guys, right? So no matter what, it's two double uh, double dial, so two calls, an SMS, and an email. That's four contact points every time your appointment center reaches out. If you have five reach outs in uh, 72 hours, that's almost 20 contact points in 72 hours, right? So, and that may seem extreme, but this is how you get an, a really high appointment setting, uh, appointments, appoint, lead to booking ratio. And our average booking comes roughly after the fifth contact attempt. So if you're just having your team do two contacts and they're moving on, you're, you might be leaving a lot of money on the table. If something is learned during the contact process, during the outreach, then you need to update the CRM accordingly. Okay, this is absolutely critical. We actually make deductions for both our sales and our appointment setting team. If they don't update the CRM after they get off a call or they learn something new or they realize that the phone number is an invalid number, it's impossible for you to have a clean CRM and an organized CRM if you're the only one doing it. The people that need to keep it organized are the people that are using it. It would be like, for example, if you went to a restaurant and the waiters never cleared anything from the tables. You know, it's like they. They, they need to do that. Even though the janitor is coming at the end of the day to clean the whole restaurant, to keep the restaurant moving smoothly in the middle of the day, you need to have waiters cleaning their own tables. Okay. So make sure that your appointment setters are updating the leads. For example, inside of prospect flow, you can come inside of here and you could leave note. You can leave notes in here. So, Hey, this person, I learned this about this person. Uh, they said this thing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It doesn't have to be complex. It doesn't have to be advanced. But the nice thing is, is that if every single person continues to update a lead over time, you'll get a lot of information on that lead. What kind of business do they run? How much money are they making? What's their biggest bottleneck? How long have they been following us? Where do they find us? All these things are valuable pieces of information that you can then use to finally set the appointment later on. Okay. And a quick note on uh, how to contact people. A lot of people talk about like local presence dialing, uh, Alloware and a few other things as well, like that allows you to pretty much make a call like you are the local number there. And in all transparency, I use it in our portfolio company and that's where we're doing, I don't know, uh, 800 or 900 dials a day. And there was no increase in conversion rate, it, but it was a massive increase in complexity and cost. So the cost of the software was pretty damn expensive. And then the other thing is the complexity was really expensive as well. Cause like we had to move it from our main CRM. Cause for example, the one we use was Alloware. That's a CRM in and of itself. And so we we're trying to make like, uh, uh, the RCRM talk to this, the calling CRM to then talk back to RCRM and 
long story short, we did it for 14 days and I, we saw zero increase in conversions. And so we ended up getting rid of it. Uh, getting rid of it. The, your mileage may vary. It could work for you, but that didn't work for us. Now let's talk about what to say. Okay. Now, ironically, this is actually the easiest part, but most people overcomplicate it. If you optimize all the other sections here, who you're calling, how you're calling them, uh, and even how you're booking them, even if your appointment center doesn't speak the same language, they will get at least a few set appointments. Okay. But alternatively, if you have the most amazing appointments that are amazing in quotation marks, because in my definition, people say, Oh, he's an amazing appointment center, but he's not sending appointments. Like, so how could he be an amazing appointment center? You could have the most amazing appointment center in the world, but they have to spend 90% of the time doing anything other than contacting leads, then they'll underperform. So if they're like, they don't know who to call. They don't know what to say. Uh, I'm sorry. They don't know who to call. They don't know how to call. They don't know how to book them on the, on the calendar. Then they're going to underperform. Right? So remember, Scaling with systems. We are leaning on systems, not people. You lean on people and things will break. Live, lean on systems and people can only enhance systems. But you don't rise to the level of the talent that you have. You fall to the level of the systems in your business. Okay? So here's a huge shock that a lot of people don't know. I don't give any of my appointment setters a script inside of Scaling with Systems. I literally just teach them about the product how we help people who we're looking for. And I let them loose our entire appointment setting onboarding process is four different articles and it has nothing. It doesn't cover anything of like who we are, stuff like that. That's covered in the company onboarding. So they're going through the same information that, the, that everybody goes through in our company, like our mission, vision, values, how we help people, the people we help, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And then they just learn how to use uh, the CRM, how to use smart lists and what their daily process should look like. And then I cut them loose. Okay. If you always have to like give scripts and tweak what they're saying, like, oh, oh, you sure said this instead of this and this instead of this, then it's the wrong person for the job. Okay. This is a very, very conditional job, meaning that depending on when they catch someone, what kind of business they have, is it the morning, the afternoon, are they tired? How many touch points have they done? Uh, you know, all these different things, because they also have to kind of qualify them as well. So if depending on um, their ability to like kind of move on their feet, and they have, they have to understand the fundamentals will determine their ability to succeed in the job. Meaning that if they are just reading straight from a script, like a robot, then as soon as the appointments, as soon as a lead says something that throws them off, they're just like, ah, cannot compute, cannot compute. And you lose the lead. So teach them the fundamentals, right? Uh, we help businesses build marketing systems. Okay, great. What kind of business do we help? We help these kinds of businesses. Okay. How do we help them? We do this exact thing for them. Great. That's all they need. They're out to do it. Hey, are you looking to build a marketing system to grow your business? Oh yes, you are. This is how we can help you. Okay. As simple as that. Uh, that being said, I know some people still want to hear it. So I actually put some example recordings and messages inside of this folder that you can get access to. And I put two recordings in there of appointments that are books, one from a lead to a booked call, one from a no show to a booked call. And here's even an example of a text message um, for after someone called, they double dialed, they didn't answer. They then sent them this text message here. And you can see literally that it's pretty simple. Honestly, it's not anything crazy. And this no show to booked was, uh, I think it's like a minute long, um, a minute 30 long, right? So no scripts. You don't, who, who's going to make a script for a minute 30 long conversation. Okay. Use common sense here. All right, let's finally talk about how to book. So this is the final step in like how to set up your appointment center for success. So how to book is to, uh, what you need to focus on here is to create an easy way to track appointments that are booked by your appointment setting team. And the simplest way that we found is to create a custom field in the CRM for an appointment setter owner, which they will then update themselves if they call, get a call booked from their efforts. Okay. So you know, let's say they know who to call, they know what to say, right? Uh, they know how to call these people, but then finally they get a booked call. Well, then how do they book the call and how do they claim that lead? That's the final step in this whole process. What we found is doing a, a custom field. Like if you look inside of prospect flow to IO, we have something called appointment center lead owner, and I can drop down and say Ravi Bavala and click save. And that means that this is my lead owner. And then if I came back over here into the smart view, I could even create a smart view and say appointment center lead owner is Ravi Vala, And I can see all the people where Ravi Vala is the appointment center lead owner. So that's what we found as the way to, uh, as the best way to claim leads uh, that are booked calls. And then if you go to settings here, you can actually come to custom fields, uh, add a field appointment center team lead single drop down box, um, underneath the contact, you can add it in here. Pretty simple to do, but that's literally the way that we track for appointments inside of our CRM is the exact same way. We just have them say, I'm a lead owner and I set this appointment up. Okay. 
Um, and you can go a little bit more advanced than this and add like custom parameters with their booking linked and even use a software like Hyros, which is an attribution software, which we'll talk about in a different module, which will allow you to see without a doubt that the lead came in from uh, the appointment center, but this is not required or even recommended when you start out. If, if you have to set up parameters and like tracking all this stuff, you're going to be confused. Your appointment center is going to be confused. I only recommend doing this if you're getting like a hundred leads a day, you have three plus appointment centers and it's becoming hard to identify, okay, was this appointment set by this person or this person? You know, we do use it in full transparency, but we fall in those categories that I just told you a second ago. So I would really, if this is your first appointment set or first one to two, don't worry about it. You do just, re you just rely on the uh, honor system. Okay. Cause it does require a little bit of honesty on the appointment of the appointment setter. Uh, but if you can't trust your team, then you have bigger problems overall. So end of the month, you could easily just come inside of your, let's say we go back to contacts here. You could easily just create smart views and say that the appointment setter is Ravi. And then I could just have me or somebody on the team literally come through these smart views on a monthly basis and review the activity and the conversations and see, was this appointment set by this person, right? And that's what I used to do before we set up the parameters. I just eyeballed it. Let's say they, they, uh, they closed 10 deals. I would eyeball like four of them and just make sure that they made sense. Okay. If you, if, if, if heaven forbid, going back to that thing that we talked about earlier, they made you $35,000 and um, you paid them 3,500, but actually they claimed one more deal. So they actually claimed 3,750. It's like, okay, they made 250 more dollars and it was probably an honest mistake, but they made you $37,000. Okay. So it's like, just understand that you can get all complex and fancy, but very likely you're going to take them away from the things that matter, which is who do they contact? Uh, how do they contact them? What do they say? And then how do they book it? If it's like now they're worrying about, oh, am I using the right link? And then it's going to get way too complex. Okay. Another secret that we've learned, and this is from our own lesson, always use the same booking page that your salespeople and funnel use. Okay. Because this is going to streamline and get rid of quite a bit of complexity. So we used to have like a specific appointment center booking calendar and an appointment center funnel and all that stuff. And what we realized was like, okay, the job of the appointment center is not to like get the deal closed. It is to get and get the person to book an appointment on the calendar and to get them qualified. So if you have like all these different pages and all this different stuff, it's just unnecessary. So we used to do discovery calls and we had like different events, like different calendar events for different sources, like appointment centers and Facebook, and all this stuff, but it was so complex. And now all we do is literally they can only set an appointment if they're qualified and they can only set an appointment from our appointment, our booking page. So we've simplified our booking page so much that literally it's just four questions. And so as, as long as the appointment setter has answered these questions, do you require clients to do a sales call paid up front? Is it less than 45 days? Your currently monthly revenue. Then if, if this is qualified, then they can send them through. Right. And not having this incredibly complex discovery call, then a, the people that didn't show up with the discovery call, you got to call them. And then are they qualified? Or are they not qualified? Simplify, 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 simplify. Okay. If you have problems with your appointment setting team, I, I'd money back guarantee you it's in one of these four areas is too complex than it needs to be. Okay. And I'm happy to help you with that if it doesn't make sense inside of here, but this is, um, that's where I'd say every time I see an appointment setting team underperforming, including our own, it's because we get away from these four things here. Right. Um, let's see here. Uh, and I also don't personally believe in the two call close. So I know some people have two call closes. That's fine. But in my opinion, I think you should just plan for one. And if it becomes two, you can follow up. So why is this important? Well, I don't think a discovery call is necessary. I think you should just have the appointment setter outbound dial the on the phone. Are you qualified? Tell me about your business. Yes. No, no, no. I just booked you in for tomorrow at four 30. Great. They get on the phone and then they can close the deal uh, on the sales team. If they have to book a call first to then book a call later, it's going to be a very uh, inefficient way to do it. Cause a lot of people aren't able to show up for the first call, let alone the second call. All right. So let's finish this up with uh, three more quick things. What is the daily flow of an appointment setter? Number one, this is directly from our uh, onboarding documents. They clear their inbox from messages and tasks um, from current prospects and update their setter notes activity accordingly. So they'll go inside of their CRM and they'll go through the conversations they're having, see if there's any new conversations that are coming in, see if there's any tasks that they have to take care of. And they run through that first. First thing in the morning, they rip through all of that stuff. And then the next thing they'll do is they'll come over to their smart list right here and they'll just rip through each smart list one after the other. They go people that have been created, but they haven't been contacted incoming messages the past 30 days. Um, there'll be 
uh, uh, leads created or missed calls within the last 30 days that haven't had a contact point within uh, the last four hours. So these are the two things that they do that takes up 90% of their time. I'd say this takes up 80% of their time. This takes up 10% of their time. And then the final thing is that they claim any leads that become booked appointments. Through that. So at the end of the day, they'll analyze all the leads and say, hey, which one of these became booked appointments? Let me just mark myself as the lead owner of this. And that way I can get paid for it at the end of the month and I can be tracked accordingly. Three things, guys, literally three things. Anything outside of this is way too complex. And and we used to have a lot more outside of this as well. And we shaved it all off. And our appointment center team has almost 3 x what they were doing um, before these efforts, literally, ironically doing less than they were doing before. Okay. So this is the daily flow of an appointment center. Um, and the other thing I wanted to say, I, I just put this in here cause I have a lot of people talk, talk to me about this, like down selling with an appointment center. Hey, I want to use my appointment center to sell this like low ticket product, this low ticket course. I don't like it. Okay. I think it's a huge mistake. And this is why. First of all, your appointment center will make less. So in order for that math that we talked about in the very beginning here, uh, this like 30 leads times 30 days times 10% of a booking rate times 20% of a close rate times a $4,000 cash per uh, deal. If you're getting, if they're now making $400 cash per deal, uh, then they're going to make significantly less money. So first of all, they're going to make less money. And the second thing is that um, your company is going to make less money because there is an opportunity cost to every single thing that you or your team does. So would you rather have them selling something for $197 or $9,997? So our appointment centers, they do not contact disqualified people. They don't try to sell them on this, this, that. They're just trying to get more qualified people to get on the calendar with our team. All right. So I hope this is valuable. Let me wrap this up with one final thought here. Uh, do not make it complicated. Please, please, please do not, do not, do not. Just make sure you have, what is it, Ravi? Uh, who to contact? A simple way to find that. Um, a, uh, a how to contact them, a way to get through each lead, what to say. You don't need complicated scripts. So you should need to know what, what you're doing for them and how to book them on the calendar slash claim the leads. And then you want to make sure you have some way to measure their progress, like a KPI dashboard. I, I think that's five things total that you can have a, a appointment setting team take you to over a million dollars a month with those five things. Anything outside of that is simply just too complex. Okay. And don't try to get it all figured out from day one. Don't have like, oh, I, Ravi had this sexy dashboard. I got to have all these dashboards and all these different things. You do not compare my business to yours. Okay. I have a team of 50 plus people and we've been doing this likely longer than you have. Um, and I also going back would probably not have done some of the stuff that I'm doing right now. That's what you guys are paying me money for. So the people that we've seen disgusting growths in their business, we got, did away with all the complex stuff and we just followed these simple things here. Figure out how to calculate lead to flow ratio, streamline the workflow, and hire your first appointment center. Everything else other than that is just noise. Don't forget, if you wanna get access to that document that I covered, you can go down below and get instant access to it. Now, it's important you know that appointment centers are just one small aspect of the marketing system called the self-sustaining funnel that we've used to generate over $25 million in sales in the past few years. If you wanna learn exactly what the self-sustaining funnel is and how you can use it to generate over 20 sales calls a day for your business, be sure to check out the video on the screen now.